Hello everyone, and welcome to part 5 of the Artisan Workshop tutorial series. And in this episode, we are going to um, create a campaign behavior. And um, so campaign behaviors are something that runs constantly in the background whenever you are in campaign. And in the, ba in the base game, in the tail world's code, they are used extensively. And that is because they are very powerful. And you can do almost anything with campaign behaviors. And because they are very flexible and just very generic thing. So they are then the most or the default option that you should go for when you are trying to build your the logic for your mod. And we will see, I will explain more in more detail what they can be used for, and you will see why they are very useful. First, let's do a tiny bit of um, organizational work. So I want to move this mission view into its own file. So right now our code is just uh, the submodule base, which calls the mission view, or we have the mission behavior here. But let's move this to a new file. Um, so we can do move type. I can press control and um, dot to get the suggestion menu. We can just move this to new file. And I'm happy to use the file name that it suggests and it will get the using statements for us and now we have a cleaner submodule file again and we can start writing our code here so um what we want is um we want um, um behavior so let's just call it artisan beer behavior uh, and this will be campaign behavior base so campaign behavior base is the base class for all campaign behaviors uh, and uh, they are the campaign here specifies just that behaviors are something that runs in the background of the actual campaigns so sandboxes and story modes so for example uh, custom battles would not have campaign behaviors because there is no world map and these are just things that run in the background of the world map, mostly. So, although they can uh, affect things that are not happening inside just the world map. So, for example, from campaign behavior, you can spawn NPCs into into missions. So, for example, the town mission uh, or the tavern mission. They will um, the handling of the NPCs is done from behaviors city. So, when you visit the city. You still visit the city inside a campaign, so campaign behaviors are still applicable there. But for example, in custom battle, there is no campaign in the background, so campaign behaviors make no sense. So now that we have selected our base class, um, we can just ask Visual Studio to implement the abstract class. And this will tell us what the basic functions of campaign behaviors are. So every campaign behavior registers some events, and we will look at this. And it will sync data. And sync data is where uh, behaviors can save data, save and load data uh, inside your save file, so your campaign save. So that is one of the key things that campaign behaviors give you, is ability to write stuff into the save file. Um, and it's the most convenient way to, may maybe even the only officially supported way of adding your save data into the into the campaign save. So we will look at this later uh, lesson or later episode. So for now, we can just leave the sync data completely empty and instead focus on the register events thing. So this is the other basic function of campaign behaviors is that they can register events or uh, they're typically used like to register events. So, um, so to register an event, we just look at campaign events, and then we get a huge list of all the events. So if we, this is kind of maybe even too much just in the, just in the suggestion menu. So we can instead just uh, left uh, control click on the campaign events and go look at them inside, inside the decompilation view of Visual Studio. So you can see there's like huge amount of campaign events on mercenary troop changed in town on settlement entered so whenever party 
you can also here see all the arguments for these events. So these will be the things that you will see if you choose to listen to this event. Um, so you have like, uh, you get on settlement entered, you get the party and you get the settlement. And I guess this is the leading hero of the party. Um, you get, you can listen to when, part, when army is gathered, when army is dispersed. You can listen on kingdom, you can listen, listen to kingdom decisions or kingdom decision failed. So there's like huge amount of different events that you can listen for. And there's even some workshop related stuff here. So if I search for workshops, you can get on workshop changed event. So this is when, when, uh, the owning hero, when the owning hero changes. So let's just assume eventually we want to listen to this event, right? So let's just, as an exercise, let's type this in. So on workshop changed event. Um, and the way you register your listener is just, uh, you get the event and then you add non, you type this add non serialized listener. And this expects two arguments, which are the object owner, which will always be this. So it's just the owning behavior and then a listener. And we can just call the listener on workshop changed event. And then, um, we can use visual studio again to generate this method like this, and it will give us the arguments and we can call we can rename this workshop. This was the old owning hero. And this is the type. And let's look at what other events we could listen for. Okay, let's 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 search for daily, every daily tick event. So there's daily tick settlement event. There's even tick town. So let's say I want uh, so towns are just cities, and I think castles and villages maybe. And settlements also include things like uh, hideouts. So let's say I want to listen to daily tick town event. And I can show you how you actually um, can affect the game state from, from something like this. So daily tick town event. And again, we do add to the listener this and daily tick town event. This name doesn't matter, by the way. So this is my, just my uh, daily tick. I can call this whatever I want. And here we can, for example, um, iterate all the workshops in the town. So towns just have workshops for each. And then we can, let's just start with some debug messages, right? So let's just um, do an information message again. So information message is the, um, wait, what? I think I lost the uh, import. I lost the uh, import when I moved my code to the other file. So I have to re-add the using statement. New information message. We can do we can do something like um let's do like town name has a workshop. So now every day we will get a tick for every town and we can iterate through the workshops and just print out something. In this case, the something is this town has a workshop named this thing. Okay. And then, um, but one more thing before this can work is we have to actually register the register our behavior. 
So register the mission behavior. We listen to on mission behavior initialize. Um, and to register a campaign behavior, we want to use this one, I think, on initialize game starter. So this will give us a game starter object, which is what we need for registering our campaign behaviors. We need this starter object. There's a few more which give, which give uh, starter objects, but I think they all look a bit worse. So these are game start and campaign start. This would only be called um, when you start a campaign, whereas the initialized game starter will also be called when you load a campaign. So almost always you want to initialize your behaviors even when the game is loaded from save game. So we want this thing, initialize game starter. Um, so again, we override, we can add more stuff to our sub module overriding this or adding more overrides. Um, and we need to cast the starter object um, into campaign starting object, I think. Campaign game starter. So this is just the way to do cast in C sharp, kind of in, with nice syntax. If the cast is not successful, uh, this if statement will fail. So inside this if block, um, this cast has success. Uh, inside this if block, this cast has been successful, and we get the game campaign game starter uh, starter. So here we can just starter add behavior new artisan beer behavior. So now we actually have our behavior, so we can just launch the game, and we should see that the daily settlement tick, daily daily town tick, is actually hit. And we get a bunch of messages about which workshops are contained in each city. Now, if we let the if we let the time pass, you can see that indeed we do get a lot of messages about all the various workshops in all the towns. And if we set breakpoint here inside the daily tick, we can go look at the workshop object. Like this. In local variables, we can see the workshops. So this is uh, artisans, which is the hidden workshop in Diathma. If I press F5 to continue, we get the smithy in Diathma and so forth. And so you can see like this has not run for this has not run for 15 days. And you can use the debugger to see various things about these objects. Okay, so how would you actually so how do you actually change the state of the world? Well, in multitude of ways, but let's say here we want to change the workshops somehow. Let's say you want to make a mod that buffs the workshops a bit. Um, you could just call change gold on the workshops. So this would just give the workshops a bit more money every day. So this would be a very easy way to buff the workshops a bit. So this would basically improve the profits from every workshop by 50 gold every day. And this could be this could be a mod if you wanted to just do a workshop buffing mod. This would literally be it. Just a behavior that on daily tick iterates through the workshops and adds some gives some gold to the workshops. But so but to try it out that this actually works, um let's first make this number be like absurdly high so that we can immediately see that it is working. Let's remove the breakpoint. So now let me buy a workshop and see that this will actually buff the workshops. But there's like literally unlimited way of how you could interact with the with the campaign states from a behavior. So let me cheat some money so that I can so that I, I can buy some workshops. Um, okay, so now if I wait, we should see that the workshops are re very profitable. And we can confirm that this will actually work as a buff. So you can see that my first day 
workshopping income is like 160,000. So this is a bit OP change, but you could do a lot subtler version of this and that would be your, that would literally be your workshop buff mod if you do, if you so choose and it would take like 10 minutes to make. But for this mod, actually, um, I want to do the opposite of this. Mm. So I want to, because the artisan brewer is a new NPC that sort of works in the brewery. So let's just um, actually decrease the money. So let's first check that workshop uh, workshop type. So I happen to know that um wait what? Workshop type string ID. I was I was in the I was in the C sharp type. If the workshop type string ID is brewery, then we want to add some percentage of the expenses of the workshop. Like remove, like basically increase the expenses, and in the in the lore of the mod, this would be the wage that we give to the artist emperor. So if we look at workshop expense, this is their daily. This is their like daily the running cost. So let's just like multiply this by. Uh, point five fifteen, so fifteen percent more. And I think this has to be negative. Mm. And I think this has to be casted into an integer. Um, let's just round it, I guess. So there should be some sort of math, math f, maybe. So we take negative number of the rounded expenses, 15% 15, 15 of the workshop expense. And we sort of remove that amount of gold from the from the breweries. Okay, so that would be my and this is because we are going to add the artisan artisan brewer there, and we have to pay him pay him some wage. But you can do really crazy things with the campaign events, just listening to campaign events and and I mean if you just look at all this, all the options here, you should sort of get an idea of like how many different things you can actually affect just from here. You can even listen to like when tournaments start and when tournaments finish, you can add some behavior when every time tournament finishes or something, or you have even track lost event, which is like, I guess when you lose sight of a track, when a track gets old or something, when villages are raided and you can do so many things. So in the future, this will be so the campaign behaviors are sort of the brain of your operation. And the way I suggest that you would structure your mods usually is that you have like one um, campaign behavior that is sort of your the brain is sort of the main logic thing in your in your mod. So that and you can also save data there. So you will have all, all your save data there. And it's just that's a suggestion of how you can um how you can organize things. But that is pretty much everything. I will move this to its own file as well. And in the next episode, we are going to look more at the reverse engineering of the overall code base with the DN spy tool. And after we have the knowledge we gain from reverse engineering, we can start adding more complicated stuff since we can copy paste stuff from their code. And uh, thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in the next episode.